What up y'all, welcome back. Today we're talking about the ultimate vlogging setup for under $300. Let's get into it. All right guys, so I actually do wanna get into more vlogging and lifestyle type of work. But when I started looking at different setups, I was actually really disappointed and confused with the options. So today I'm gonna to break down exactly why I chose this setup and why I think it's the best setup on the market today. So for me, a big point of reference was actually quality. There are some categories that I needed checked off in my vlogging setup, and I think every one of you guys should consider as well. First of all, quality audio. I think I need a vlogging setup that has the ability to put out quality audio. I just can't watch videos with crappy sound. I want a wide 4K shot that I can actually see so a front facing screen 4k quality and a wide enough shot so that I can get the angles that I want I also want stabilized footage I want some type of optical or digital stabilization I can't stand shaky vlogging content out there I can't just watch the video for very long it makes my brain hurt when I just see this like bouncing and lastly I wanted something convenient and easy to use I didn't want some very large luggy setup that I constantly had to check the settings I just wanted something easy so that I would always be able to carry it around and enjoy the process of vlogging and catching content. So with that, I started diving into the market and I took a look at the RX100 series, the G7X series, those are the two big vloggers in the market right now. I took a look at the Canon M5 and M60, their new mirrorless systems. I took a look at the Sony bigger bodies, uh, the A6400, 6600, and some of the Fujis and even the GH5 setups. And I kind of found flaws with all of those. I even looked at the GoPro. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of break through what those flaws are, but I won't go into detail of each and every setup. So the camera I actually love the most out of those that I talked about is actually the RX100 series. The RX107 is a fantastic camera. I bought it, I owned it, I tested it, I put out a review video on it, check that out. Um, but I, the flaws that I had with it are it's only a 24 at its widest point. So it's not as wide as I'd like it to be. Also, the stabilization of the footage wasn't quite there. Um, but overall, that's a fantastic option for you, but it's very, very expensive at $1,300. Also, the G7X just wasn't the quality that I wanted. The G7X Mark III has some autofocus issues I don't love also not stabilized at all. So I just don't love the footage coming out of that. The GoPro is a fantastic product, but there's no front facing screen. It's difficult to set up an external mic. Um, it's just kind of an inconvenient, uh, set up overall and the front facing screen kind of broke it for me there. The Canon mirrorless systems, the M50 and the M6, those have severe cropping issues in 4K, along with the fact that they lose some of their phase detect autofocus in 4K. So just some firmware updates that may be able to fix down the line, but just wasn't quite there for a vlogging setup right now. And then getting into some of the bigger Sony bodies like the A6600 and 6400, I actually own the A6400, I'm shooting it right now on my overhead shot. Um, they're just not stable footage. You really have to have a gimbal on there. The stabilization is not very good at all. So that's kind of the big flaw holding that back. And it's a little bit on the big side. When you start getting a 10 to 18 lens on there, you get a pretty large setup overall. So that brings me to the ultimate vlogging setup that I have set up and I'm so excited about it. Whew, just magical, way too involved. Here we go, the DJI Osmo Action. And this, camera in my opinion is so underrated. I think it's a fantastic camera for the price. It can't be beat and you guys should hear me out. I picked up the DJI Osmo Action right now for $230. I actually got mine on eBay. It was brand new, closed box, $200. Come on, that's like, that's hard to beat. So right off the bat, this camera is way far and above the competition just in terms of value because of the price that I got it at and the price that you can get it at right now. So when this camera came out, it actually was widely criticized for some of the issues that it had. But recently, as of a month or two ago, DJI released a firmware update that took care of a lot of those issues. And now it should really be revisited as a proper option, option for vlogging. Some of the firmware updates that they included were no more lag on the front facing screen so you don't have that delay in time, increased audio quality, they released an audio adapter so you can now have an external microphone. In 4K, the uh, quality is overall a little bit better. They fixed some of the stabilization issues. Overall, they just really revamped the whole thing to make it a perfect little vlogging camera. Well, this is a great little setup because it already has the built-in screen, front-facing screen, so that's off the table. Uh, it's stabilized footage. Rocksteady in 4K is outstanding. It is cropped in a little bit, but it actually saves me from that super wide GoPro looking 
action camera look to more of a narrow, normal type of look. And with the de-warping on and 4K rock steady, it gives me a pretty good linear shot with outstanding stabilization. So I could be running and my footage is still pretty smooth. Battery life is pretty decent, extremely small, a very good 4K quality, uh, dynamic range is good. Overall, it was just a good little option. And then I looked at the price and I was like, 230 bucks, I got it for 200. That's a no brainer, so I'm gonna give it a shot. So now I'm gonna talk about how I set this up to really be a convenient and ultimate vlogging machine. So if I'm bringing value to you guys right now, please make sure you subscribe and hit that thumbs up below. It would really help this video out and I'd appreciate it. Right now I'm gonna go through all of the different accessories that I bought to really set this vlogging setup up. Um, I will include all of the links below so you don't have to search for those. Um, those are affiliate links, so it will help me out if you click on those if you're looking to buy. When looking at this camera, one of the flaws that I saw was the battery life is not up to par in comparison to some of the bigger cameras that I'm used to. So to get through a full day of vlogging, I would need a couple extra batteries. So I went ahead and picked up the official DJI batteries. I didn't skimp on these, and I'll tell you why. Battery is actually part of the housing. So the outside of the battery, part of the ceiling for the water seal, and part of the housing. So I didn't want to go with some of the third party options just in case I took it out in the water and you know had to rely on third party housing and waterproofing. I didn't want to do that so I just went with the DJI batteries. Those only cost me about $16 a piece and they last me a pretty decent amount of time. So next up I needed to deal with the audio because that's the biggest flaw I had with a lot of the vlogging setups. So I went with the DJI official but not made by a DJI um, external mic adapter. It's actually made by a company called Synovia. Then once I got that, I needed a way to mount a microphone on top, so it's kind of a no-brainer, let's get a cage. So when looking around at different cage options, I actually found a lot of them didn't have the ability to fit this side microphone adapter because it wasn't open on the side, until I found the Ulanzi Osmo Action Vlog Cage. Um, it's called the OA-1, and I'll actually provide a link below. It's just a little cage, I mean, nothing to it, it's metal. Uh, but it is open on the side here so you can put that adapter in. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so now we got a cage on it. We got a microphone adapter. We have a front facing screen. Uh, we have a couple different cold shoe options. So you have a cold shoe up top. You have a cold shoe on the side. You have several different mounting points to add more accessories like a light or whatnot. All right, so let's get into the actual audio setup. Of course, I went with the Rode DJI Micro because of the quality of it. I already owned one uh, and its size. It's just really easy to use and fits perfectly in this setup. So you can see uh, that with that setup, it doesn't make it that much bigger of a setup as a whole and you can provide outstanding professional audio quality that'll blow away a lot of the bigger, larger vlogging setups. In fact, many guys with larger full-size DSLRs are still using the, the Rode Micro for their audio setup. So now you have quality professional audio. Up next, I need some way to grip it or hold it. And the nice thing about this cage is it came with the built-in GoPro mounts so I can now mount any type of, uh, you know, handle or accessory. I went with the PGY Tech. And the reason I like this is because it's actually an extendable um, selfie stick, really. <laughs> an extendable pole. It has the GoPro mount so it can hold this whole setup. And then it has a built-in tripod mount or built-in tripod. So I can easily set that up, put that wherever it is, and now I can have um, locked off shots whenever I want and it's extendable and not very big. So just a no-brainer Let's go ahead and set that up now and with it locked off. There you go Now you have a full little vlogging setup that just works perfectly makes good audio makes good audio <laughs> Produces quality audio shoots full 4k rock steady stabilized footage and you can see that it's just really good footage for the size. You now have backup batteries, you have additional places to put an external light. And so this setup is really, really good. I mean, there's not much more you can ask for, for look how size, look how small this is. I mean, I could put this in my pocket. It's so small, such an easy setup. So how much better can this setup get? 200 bucks I paid for the camera, 20 bucks for the cage, 60 bucks for the mic, another 20 bucks for the stand, and overall I'm looking at about $30. I think I paid another 30 for actually for that microphone adapter. So a little over $300 or right around $300 for an ultimate 4K shooting vlog setup. Come on, come on, come on, give me some props. Let me actually show you some vlogging footage right now.
So as you can see here, this is just your normal vlogging car shot. Um, it's a nice wide angle. I don't even have my arm fully extended. I just have it like laying against the steering wheel right here. And it's a nice wide angle. You get a lot of field of view. And this is the big difference between using something like this and something like the RX100 or the G7X that's gonna have only a 24 millimeter. So the crop would be more like this. So you could tell that it's a significant difference and you get much more in the frame using something a little bit wider like this. So right now I'm actually driving, I'm just doing 30 miles an hour and I'm in a secluded like side street right now. But you could tell that overall this, the footage is really smooth. I mean, this is not a smooth road by any means. It's just a normal everyday driving road um, with some stops and I'm just hand holding. So you can see how much this footage is really, really stabilized. This is with Rocksteady off and this will show you the same amount of stability, but you can already see that it's a little bit wider of a shot with the Rocksteady because Rocksteady punches in a little bit, which for our purposes here, for, to me, this is a little bit too wide. It starts seeing some warping. I actually like Rocksteady on because I don't really care for the ultra wide action camera look for vlogging. I think it just kind of annoys people after a while and it's tiresome to look at it for a long period of time. So I like the little bit more punched in version and you can see how much more steady the footage is with the rock steady on. This is walking. It's a beautiful day out. Couldn't ask for it being more sunny. I'm really not liking this uh, dynamic range. It really bothers me. What's crazy though is that it's such a small setup. It's so much more enjoyable to use something like this than it is to use a bigger setup. And yeah, you give up a little bit of quality, but you have exponentially more convenience. And to me, that's more important because it takes a lot to get out there and vlog anyway. So if you are gonna vlog and you're discouraged already by your gear, you're just not gonna do it. If, at least that's what I find. But if your gear is easy to use and convenient, then I feel like it's just more likely that you vlog more and you just get more of the things that you wanna shoot. So to me, that's most important. All right, get my out of shape butt running again. We're gonna do a jog now. All right, this is jogging. So you can see how steady that footage is. Some of the things I love is that the front facing camera shows you a lot of nice details. It shows you a flat, a red blinking light along with a little LED light on the front that shows you when you're recording. It shows you what you're recording in 4K24. Um, it has a little indicator, a little mic indicator on it that can show you that a mic is connected and the mic is picking up sound. It's got a battery indicator and how much time is left on your memory card. So those are all things that are super helpful in a front facing screen and that are really easy to see. And the overall, the size is great. You could see what the exposure is looking like. I need to turn down my country music. Turn, you can see what the exposure is looking like. You could see what your framing is like. And overall, it's just really, really pleasant and easy experience. And, and that's kind of what the overarching theme is here with an Osmo Action is recording with it and taking it out to vlog is very easy. It's something that you could do quickly and you don't have to think about much and it's just a convenient and easy package. So what I love about this camera is I think more about what I'm gonna shoot and the content that I'm gonna shoot and what I'm gonna say than I do thinking about the settings. And that to me is really important because in most cameras that I use, especially for vlogging or any type of video, I'm constantly wondering about settings and stabilization and the footage and whatnot. And with this camera, I mean, with a vlog, you're, le you're worried a little bit less with quality than you are with like films for a client or something. But overall with this camera, I'm not worried about those things as much because it does a lot of automation really well, as long as your lighting is good. Another thing that I really love about this camera is it's so rugged. So especially with the cage on, I could toss it around. I could throw it in a bag. I could get it wet. I could go underwater and I don't have to worry about it breaking or failing on me. Whereas, you know, with a normal camera, like even an RX100 or the new Sony ZV-1, you know, you can't take that camera in water. You can't get it wet. It's not weather sealed. It's not as rugged. So, I mean, you throw into a bag or you knock it or there's a screwdriver or something and you get hit. You know, now you can damage the camera. So with the Osmo Action, you don't really have to worry about those sort of things. And that's something that I really enjoy. It does have some flaws though. Even with vlogging today, I'm noticing when I'm walking in mixed light and going from shadows to brights or backlit to front light, I'm noticing that the metering is a little bit funky. It's taking the camera a little bit of time to pick up what to be exposing for. So that can be an issue. I don't know if that's something long-term. I'll keep testing that. I also have noticed that sometimes it doesn't expose for your face as opposed to what's the majority of the scene is. And that can be frustrating with vlogging. 
But again, you're talking about a really small sensor and a small camera, so you can't expect the world from this thing. Overall, I'm super happy with the quality that it's putting out, and the flaws are annoying, but they're not something that's a deal breaker for me. I think overall, they shouldn't be a deal breaker for you, unless you're very, very picky about your footage and the quality. If you want the highest quality content, then this camera is not for you. But again, none of the small cameras are for you. You're gonna jump up to like, a full frame Canon or a full frame, not even a full frame Sony because they don't have flip out screens. I would say the full frame Canon is really the only vlogging setup that's gonna meet your needs and your standards of quality. But for 99% of the people out there, especially for YouTubers, I mean, you should be very open to this camera because YouTube compresses down so much. It's not like you should be a stickler for quality anyway because the compression is gonna destroy your footage. It's gonna crush your dream. I also know some of the smoothness of footage will get drastically changed once I put ND filters on them. That is a plus with some other cameras. They have ND filters built in. This does not, but I bought some Polar Pro ND filters and that will allow me to expose, you know, properly with proper shutter speeds and get a little more smoothness in the footage. But again, it's not something I really want to be worried about all the time. I don't want to have to be changing ND filters out depending on my lighting. I kind of just want a mindless process of just going out and shooting content that I want. All right, so as you can see, the vlog setup is awesome. Such stable footage, right? Good audio, quality 4K, I mean, this is a no brainer really guys. So check out all my links below. Let me know what you guys think of my setup and what you think of the DJ Osmo action as a vlogging setup. One more thing I will say is I am keeping my eye out on the Insta 361. They released that camera. It's a modular type setup where you can have a 360 camera, but they also have a one inch sensor. It's not quite there yet on some of their mods. I mean, um, they will have to put some firmware updates and maybe put out some more modules that can actually work better for vlogging but they do have a good concept there they can have the camera flip around they have a one inch sensor better in low light they're having some focus issues right now and those sort of stuff so the beauty of this dj osmo action is you don't have to think much it's pretty automatic um, your settings you could set for a max iso if you don't want grainy footage um, the focus points are pretty much set you're just going to get a lot of things in focus you're not going to get a shallow depth of field like you would on um, an RX-105, for instance. But you're gonna get a really stable footage, you're gonna get everything in focus, you're not gonna have to worry about things. Framing up is easy because of the front-facing screen. Um, and really, you know, you just can't get into really, really low light because it is a, still a small sensor on this thing, you know. Just kind of like the GoPro. You can go into low light, but you're gonna get that mushy, kind of jello-y looking footage. So, vlogging is more, you gotta have good light for this thing. But that's kind of true for all vlogging setups right now. A lot of those smaller cameras, you still have to have good light. Once you start getting into low light and dark settings and nighttime vlogging, you're just gonna need to throw a light on to make it look good. And you could do that with this setup with the extra cold shoe. You can get a Luma Cube, Luma Cube, I think it's what it's called, but a small little LED light to put some light out. And then you can, you know, shoot whenever you want. So that's all I got for the ultimate vlogging setup. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more vlogging videos. I'm gonna get good at it. I'm gonna learn how to do it. I'm gonna try to do it more and get good at it. So that's all I got for you guys today. I appreciate y'all. Till next time, peace.